Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanis. In the last episode we took care of our explosions which is awesome. Now you guys can add some really awesome explosions to your game. And that's great, you know, adding little effects like that will go a long way in making your game look really great. Uh, today what I'd like to take a look at is the concept, uh, some procedural animation concepts here, some more procedural animation concepts. I'd like to take a look at ragdoll physics. We're going to be adding a, a ragdoll death to our zombie. Uh, we've already got a death for our character. The, the character dies in a bloody explosion, and that's fine. Uh, but for the, for the zombies, we're going to have them die uh, ragdoll. Alright, so let's get started. Okay guys, so ragdoll zombie. We're going to basically create the ragdoll zombie uh, and instantiate it when our when our actual zombie dies. We're going to create an asset and instantiate it when our actual zombie dies. Uh, what we're going to do is break this up into two episodes. My episodes have been going pretty long lately and I don't like that. Some of them are 40-45 minutes and that's way too long for most people to follow along. So I'm going to break this up into two episodes. First of all, creating the asset and second of all, the code itself. Both of, the, both of these should be relatively short episodes. Now, I made a few decisions uh, building up to this point. I made decisions early on in how I designed this game, and this is the point when they really come back to haunt me. <laughs> now, I, I decided to leave it. Rather than go back and replace uh, the concepts, uh, what I'm going to show you is the workaround, what I, what I had to do. Uh, and that way, if you ever experience issues of your own, uh, you will be able to do the, exactly the same thing. There are, a few, and I'll try and explain what I think you should do uh, to make things easier uh, a little bit later on. Um, first of all, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to find in our models, you're going to look in your models, and you're going to find your zombie character. All right, And you're going to drag the zombie out onto the screen. Uh, let's just zero this thing out at 0z. I'm having some problem with my mouse, so if I run into issues, I'm really, really sorry, guys. It's, it, I think my mouse is dying. Anyway, I'm going to rename this right away to uh, Rag Doll Zombie. And there's a few things that we need to do. First of all, if I had been smart and I had set up my zombie with an initial T-pose of some kind, uh, I wouldn't have to do this first step, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't actually leave a T-pose uh, for my zombie in the animation, and now we're going to have to do a workaround. But let's take a look at it right now. First of all, the zombie itself, if I click on it and I expand it, we can see that all we've got in there is our zombie soldier, which is the mesh. Uh, and we've got ourselves the zombie master, and the master is, the, is actually the heading of our rig. Uh, for the rig, what we need to do is we really need this character to be in a T-pose. We're going to use uh, the, the wizard uh, to be able to create this ragdoll, and we really want it to be in a T-pose. It'll, it'll help us go a long way. All right, so I'm going to expand my rig out here, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to expand it out if I can. Uh, I'm going to go through each one of these, and whenever I see a rotation, except for in very few, uh, very few circumstances when something's been mirrored, I'm going to reset my rotations to zero. All right, and I'm going to go through each and every bone, oops, each and every bone, and I'm going to set my rotations to zero. All right, so I'm going to let you guys go through right now. If you're using my rig, uh, or you don't have a T pose character, uh, and you're having to go through and do this, then I'm going to let you guys do that right now. I'm going to go. I'm going to go off the video right now, go through and set everything to zero, and I'll come back and I'll show you the ones that I didn't set. All right, there's a couple that will cause uh, the arm or the leg to jump to the wrong side, and obviously those ones you don't want to set to zero. And I'll I'll come back and I'll show you which ones those are. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay guys, so that is all done, I finished it all up. And basically what I did is on areas of this zombie, now because I created I knew which areas it was, uh, on areas of the zombie that were mirrored, um, so for example the right clavicle, boom, uh, I left the rotations of negative 180 and negative 180. Uh, and the same thing is true of the right leg. In the right leg I also did, in the, sorry, the right, oh, right hip. In the right hip, I left uh, rotations of, it should be negative 180. It doesn't really matter, 180 or negative 180, it doesn't really matter. Uh, anyway, I left uh, rotations of negative uh, 180, negative 180, and everything else I set to zero. All right, every other rotation. Don't touch the translations, don't touch the scales. We're only affecting the rotations. And the reason why we're doing this is we really want the zombie to be in the T-pose uh, for the, the stuff we're going to do next, for the wizard to work properly. Now, now that I've got it like that, and I've got everything expanded, let me just open this up a little bit. I've got everything expanded along here so I can see my entire zombie structure and that's great. What I want to do, I want to go to game object and I want to say go to 3D object and I want to go across to ragdoll and it's going to pop up this uh, this extra window here 
which of course can I move it no of course I can't uh, of course ends up underneath my recording area <laughs> Anyway, each of these is a different section. It says pelvis, it says left hips, left knee, left foot, right hips, etc, etc, etc. Now basically all we want to do is we want to take each of these individual sections and populate this new window. All right, so the pelvis, you're going to go through and you're going to find your pelvis and you're going to drag it and you're going to drop it in pelvis. The left hips. Now your, your structure is going to be different, all right? Unless you are using my uh, particular assets that I, I've given out, yours is going to be different. So it's going to be very important that you go through and you find where everything is on, on your character, all right? Uh, I've named all my stuff, so I'm going to go through. Uh, I'm going to find my left hips, which is right here. Oh, double clicking. Left hips right there. Left knee is my left knee. I'm going to drag it and drop it. Uh, left foot is my ankle. I'm just going to use my ankle for that. Uh, right hips. Let's scroll down a bit here so we can see. Right hips is going to be my right hip. I'm going to drag it and drop it. Uh, again, right knee is going to be right knee. Drag it and drop it. And right ankle. Drag it and drop it under right foot. Same thing with the arms. Let's go up to here to the arms. The arms. Left arm. Let's find my left arm right here. I'm going to be using left shoulder if you're using my character. is for the arm itself. And elbow, obviously, for the elbow. And right arm. Let's go through and find our right arm. Right arm. Right arm. Oh, here it is right here. Right shoulder. I'm going to use that. Pop it in there. And right elbow. Pop it in here. And middle spine. Now you you can choose whichever one you want. I'm going to use my I'll use my uh, lower spine. I think I'll use my lower. Oops, my lower spine. Come on, mouse. Please stop double clicking. Use my lower spine. And for the head on mine, I'm going to use the neck. All right. Like I said, everyone's might be different. Everyone's uh, everyone's. Um, character might be different. It's going to be very important for you to go through and understand what your character is. Total mass is going to be the total amount that this, this dead body weighs. Uh, it can be physically moved around by explosions. It can be physically moved around by, by uh, characters banging into it and that kind of thing. Um, give it a mass. I, I, it, 20 is, is going to be relatively heavy. Uh, you want to make sure that it, it weighs about the same amount as your actual character did. Uh, yeah, as your actual character did. So make sure that I think my character had, had a total mass of one. I can't really remember. Uh, if it's too light, it'll go flying everywhere. It'll go flinging everywhere. And if it's too heavy, it'll, it'll change. So I'm going to go through and make it a give it a total mass of one. Uh, and strength, I'm going to leave it and flip forward. I'm not going to bother clicking it. You can if you want to. Uh, it doesn't really matter. When you say create, boom, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with, if, let's, if I move in here so we can see a little better, you're going to end up with these rigid bodies, basically, um, these colliders with rigid bodies on them all over the entire character. Each one has been attached to a bone. Okay? Each one has now been attached to a bone. Now watch what happens when I hit play. Play. This guy is going to collapse. Boom! He just fell on his butt. Let's try it again. Let's actually just do it on. Let's turn off maximize on play. Hit play. Boom, he's just going to simply collapse. All right, and there's some adjustments you may have to make. There's going to be a whole bunch of adjustments within here. If we take a look at the actual character now, what we actually created underneath the zombie uh, body right here, we're going to see that the, there's this new thing called, these new rigid bodies for each and every one. If I click up here on the ragdoll itself, but if I go on to the actual, um, if I go into the actual things that we use, so for example, lower spine I think we used, each one of these has a new thing that says rigid body and character join on it. And each one of these here can be adjusted. It'll tell you everything about it, everything about it right in here, okay? Uh, and you can go through and you can play with these. You can just use them as default and you can see the character falls relatively well. Um, there are some adjustments that you might want to make, uh, depending, you kind of want all the arrows going the same way, and all of ours are. You can see these little arrows and everything here that are pointing properly. Uh, and that's really what you're looking for, all right? That's really what you're looking for. That in itself is finished. That is our ragdoll character. Now, there is one more thing I want to do. I'm going to click on the ragdoll zombie itself. And uh, if you, I'm going to remove the animator, first of all. We have no need of it. I'm going to remove this right now. Uh, remove component. We don't need that at all. Uh, what we do want um, to do is when our when our characters actually die, when this character actually dies or our zombie actually dies, what we want to do is we want to set it up so this thing um, collapses properly uh, and then after a short time disappears. We don't want to leave the bodies littered around. In your game, maybe you say, yeah, I kind of want that. I kind of want to leave the bodies littered around. In my game, I don't want that. I want them to die off fairly quickly. So I'm going to go in through in here and say add component, 
add component, I'm going to go to my scripts and our pre-existing scripts that we called uh, destroy me. I'm going to add the destroy me script and I'm going to give it a time of let's say uh, one second should be fine. So the the character will be alive for basically one second. All right, this thing will collapse. It'll give it time to fall and then it'll destroy itself. So let's let's take a look here, just to make sure everything's working great. Ready, play. Collapses and after one second disappears. All right, guys, that's it. That is the creation of the ragdoll character. It's very, very simple to use. There are more details, but for the basic, uh, the basic character, that's all you have to do. All right, it's very, very easy to use, and now you've got yourself ragdoll. Now, in the next episode, what I'd like to take a look at is actually replacing our our dead zombie with this ragdoll, so it can collapse in place. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. If you did, let me know with a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. Uh, this was a very simplistic episode, and I kept it nice and short, which was my two goals. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I love to hear from you. Let me know how your game's going. I'd love to see it. I want to know what you're doing. I hope you guys are following along. Have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. I try and get back to everyone who, who takes time to write to me. I try and get back to them as well. All right, guys. Thumbs up. Oh, one last thing before I do the thumbs up, thumbs down thing. Uh, prefabs, make sure you take your ragdoll zombie, drag it, and drop it into your prefabs so you've always got it available for use later on. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.